Let me welcome lawyer extraordinaire, host of Suit Up, the one and only Xavier, Xavier Pope. Welcome to the Karen Hunter Show. Hey, Karen. Hi. Hey, Xavier. How are you? I'm pretty good. I just came from hot yoga because I had to get my mind right after hearing the foolishness in this uh, Senate uh, confirmation hearings of Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson. I just had to get my mind right. It's just out of control right now. So, so I want to I want to put the call out eight six six eight zero one eight two five five. Yesterday was triggering, and I don't know if you're you know if you feel this way. But to get to a place, you've been through law school, you've been navigating these corporate spaces. For many of us, and I've been in maybe too many rooms to, to say, with people who didn't have my credentials, didn't have my talent, didn't have my, you know, my genesis, whatever, but I'm, 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 I'm their subordinate. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or they're over me. And they have the uh, mitigated, the, the audacity to kind of like, and this is the way I felt. There's a woman, Marsha Blackburn, who has a, a degree in home economics. So shout out to everybody that has a degree in home economics. God bless you. I ain't mad at you for getting a degree in home economics, but please know that you are not on the level of Katanji Brown Jackson to even utter critical race theory. And you don't, you do not have the abilities that this woman has. And it's like outside of maybe Cory Booker and maybe two others, who's a Rhodes Scholar, by the way. And I'm not putting a lot of, you know, but I'm saying you had to do something academically to get a law degree as you had. She she went to Harvard twice, you know, got a law degree, has been judge and has been lawyered in different areas. Like y'all asking dumb questions to this woman who's an intellectual giant. And I feel like many of us have been in a room with people, low level, mediocre people who somehow have a position over you, the audacity to question you. Talk about that, Xavier. Well, well, Karen, it's not about what Katanji Brown, Judge Katanji Brown Jackson's qualifications are. Let's make that clear. It's not about what my qualifications would be uh, as uh, I have an economics degree, I have a finance degree, I have a law degree from Rutgers Law. Uh, it, it isn't about whatever qualified Black person's uh, position is. Come on now, we, we know that we have to work twice as hard to get where we are, just to even be allowed in the room. So it's not about whether we belong, it's about whether they want us to belong. So let's make that abundantly clear. They, they don't want us to be there. <laughs> they don't want us to be there regardless of what our qualifications might be. And they feel as if this country should have never afforded us the opportunity to be able to get the qualifications for the job in the first place, just, as, just like the, let's stick to the founder's constitution that has been referred to um, by Republican GOP Senate, well, that means that you want Katanji Brown Jackson to be three fifths a person as opposed to one ninth of the Supreme Court of the United States of America. Come on, come on. His name is Xavier Pope. Uh, he has a broadcast called Suit Up, and you can follow him at Xavier, E X A V I E R Pope, like Olivia. Uh, <laughs> uh, I also, you know, so I'm gonna put the number out if anybody's felt this way. And I think you're spot on. Also love how you're handling people. So there was a person on Twitter, uh, Xavier's fun to follow on Twitter, who basically uh, said something to the effect, oh, because I tweeted something. And then they said, well, what about all of the racists that, uh, you know, said, asked Clarence Thomas stupid questions? What about all of those racist liberals that, you know, and you you handled this in a way that it it uh, gave me shivers because I was like, that's how that's done. And he was like, oh, it's so nice that you are a surfer. So tell us more about you. I mean, you like completely ignored the ignorance because I was going to go all in on his ignorant ass, you know, and go back and forth. You're like, so tell us, dude. So you seem to be living your best life. You don't have time for this. And it went back and forth. And he was like, yeah, I even make surfboards for people like, you know, and he posted a picture of Tiger Woods and all. And you're like, wow, what a great life you're living. I'm jealous. And I said, Xavier Pope, man, you are a ninja. That's that yoga training. You did that <laughs> yogi Jedi mind trick. And I was like, that's how you handle ignorant gaslighting trolls. Talk about that. Is this something you've acquired? And when did you find that magic? Uh, just like Katanji Brown Jackson has, has found that magic 
as she has been in her confirmation hearings uh, and keeping her composure and listening to the question that's being asked. And instead of being sucked into uh, the ignorance that have been asked of her, really focus on what is it, why is this person even giving this response in the first place? Why are they asking, why are, why are they asking this person, her, this question in the first place? Unpacking that and then you, seeing their humanity and recognizing that they see a group of people and they don't see the individual humanity that each black person possesses. And once they see you, you recognize their humanity, then, then the, the light is placed on them. You have to make a choice. Do you want to see right in the open that you are a fool? Or do you want to be able to recognize that this person sees you and you can see them in return? Now, obviously that won't work with every single person, but I do my best to see the humanity and then see why are they coming at me? Why are they undressing and unpacking something that I'm saying with and responding with just flat out ignorance and just stripping their guard down and that's how you flip that over because guess what you know, i'm a smart negro an uppity negro like they like to call me <laughs> <laughs> yes you're not uppity you're just a person that is that has a brain that functions it's not crusted over you know i struggle with that xavier because do well, i got things to do I don't have time to be educating these ignorant ass people. I feel like, you know, and I, that's probably why I'm not sitting in these seats right now. <laughs> I was like, I was like, Marsha Blackburn with your, with your home economics ass degree asking me some questions. That's the way it would have gone. You gonna ask me some questions? You home economics degree having trick? You gonna, you gonna, you really asking me about critical race theory with your ignorant ass? Like I probably would, they would have to, I would get not get confirmed. I already know it. I already know it. I already know it. Yeah, well, Karen, the, the, will you embed critical race theory uh, in the laws of the United States of America is a, is a, is a dumb question because uh, the study of critical race theory is unpacking uh, the embedded racism in the country uh, since its founding. So that is not something that Katanji Brown Jackson has to lift one finger to do. It's already there. Uh, and so um, she obviously can't give a response like that without truly unpacking what that actually means and the time limit that she has before her. But she, but she can leave it to people like myself uh, to, uh, to, to basically tell Marsha Blackburn how foolish she is. And then she had the nerve to, to double down on what she said and treat it like the media is trying to silence her. You are, are this is a Senate confirmation hearing on televised. Nobody trying to silence you. You got a position in government talking about how is what i need to know all right um highlight for the day because i brought you on because i refuse well not that i refuse to watch i was doing tapings all from 10 o'clock on what what stood out for you today and what what do you predict will happen uh yeah there are two different standout uh, john cornyn uh, republican senator uh he basically uh his 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 try, try to act like Katanji Brown Jackson didn't know what she was talking about uh, in terms of what the way the legal system is set up and basically talked about judicial activism and he primarily put his attention on a dissent of John Roberts uh, in an Oberfeld case in terms of same sex marriage uh, and basically focusing his mind on dissent as opposed to the actual uh, the 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 precedent of this court and basically. Uh, saying that the Constitution is between a man and a woman because people that elect members of government say it should be, not necessarily Constitution, kind of drove this off the a cliff that Katanji Brown Jackson refused to follow him in that ridiculous, uh, foolish analysis. And then, um, then there's also Senator Lindsey Graham, who mm -hmm. wound up walking out in the middle of an exchange between himself and Illinois Senator Dick Durbin, um, but really had some really uh, just coded language in terms of how he uh, brought up his soliloquy about prior uh, Supreme Court justices, what happened with Ju Justice Kavanaugh and Amy Coney Barrett, and basically muddling the issues and just basically grandstanding and not really focusing attention on what's in front of him, which is questioning the judge about a qualification to become a Supreme Court justice. What, what does this say? So uh, we watched... Brett Kavanaugh, who was very problematic, came in with some very, you know, he had a, a, an accuser similar to Clarence Thomas, 
with Anita Hill had somebody that took the stand to say this man uh, did some things sexually inappropriate. He was a horrible human being as a young person. We witnessed that. He got confirmed. Amy Coney Barrett, with her limited um, presiding as a judge experience, she got confirmed. What is going to be the the is it do you think is it is it possible for Katanji Katanji Brown Jackson to not be confirmed? Do you think there's a possibility that she won't be confirmed? And if so, Xavier, what would be the reasoning? The reasoning would be the racism in the United States of America and the Republican Party and any Democrat senators like someone like a, a, a Senator uh, Joe Manchin are finding a reason to brush back against progress of African Americans in, in the country and feeling like that's politically expedient for them. Um, it says a um, terrible thing about a democracy uh, when uh, when the primary focus of a judicial Senate confirmation hearing is focusing on the race and sex of the candidate that's up for nomination um, based, just because she was nominated for a, by a Democratic president who basically is seen as an N-word lover um, because he was a former vice president under a, the first black president and now has a female black president and now is nominated never nominated the first female black uh, Supreme Court justice. And that's what the attention is as opposed to who's best to do the job. And so that is what you would see in, in the political expediency that the right feels. But that being said, the majority of the American public does support her nomination. Mm. As you're saying that, I'm like, we have come through uh, slavery, reconstruction, Jim Crow, civil rights to get to go not all the way back, but to get to a point where people no longer are hiding their hoods and they don't care if you call them racist. They don't care if they are racist. They are not at all concerned about what it looks like. And I was like, how do we get here? So it's just, it's all right that you know that if you don't vote for her and then Lindsey Graham yesterday talking about, well, just because we don't support it doesn't make us racist, but there's no other reason because the woman is wild, wildly qualified. Yeah, Karen, she is widely, she's, she's, she's definitely is, is qualified for the position. Um, but we have, we, what we didn't have uh, in terms of what was, what consisted as social capital, which, which social media now is influencing politics and also the capitalist society that uh, basically undergirds a lot of our political discourse this day is that people can get attention, can make money, can get prestige and power just by you, by the force of media and social media, which we didn't have as tools before, which punished people from the limited positions they had in society at some juncture between civil rights era uh, to, I would roughly say around the beginning of two, the 2000s. Now that's changed significantly. Well, now there are platforms that are willing to handsomely reward people who go out and say racist, say racist things and do racist things. And so because now there is an incentive to being a racist, now we have a country in a, a political sphere that is happy to be racist and now pulling off their hoods and showing their true colors. Xavier Pope, EX, Xavier, EX, Xavier. Um, you, you, let, you know, a few times you've been on the show and you've talked about your experience um, being being raised in a foster home and coming through that to become this person that you are today. And I think about Katanji uh, Brown Jackson, who uh, did not have the, the trials and tribulations that Xavier Pope had uh, to climb through pretty a little bit, almost a little privilege, you know, almost a little, little, you know, a little bit privileged. And, and I feel like there's also sort of a rift, there's a class rift in, in, in our culture and our community around her being married to a white man and all, you know, so there's like, you know, you know, you've heard it, you've heard it. Um, but I want you to bring your experience to, to the table. And as you are watching this thing play out, what does it mean to you with your background and all that you've endured and come through and overcome to be who you are? Well, I mean, it's regardless of whether you came from a privileged background or one that was in a foster care like myself, only 85% of the legal profession, 85% rather is white. Only 5% of the legal profession is black. And only 2% of the legal profession, uh, there are black women. So uh, Katanji Brown Jackson, regardless of how she came up, still face um, really challenging eyes to be where she is right now, sitting there to become history because even our best sometimes is not good enough. Um, in terms of where I sit, 
um, I get the the proud joy of being able to witness someone in the legal profession uh, make it and come to a seat uh, and be able to influence society. And the reason why I went to law school is because I had a negative uh, situation that happened with me in terms of being driving while black. And so I went to law school out of spite. Um, and so, so I could make a difference in society and be able to elevate my platform and make a difference in society. And so I feel like I'm doing that. I'm very happy and proud to be that. And that's why I sit here before you and uh, cream rises to the top. And, and it's, I'm talking about black cream. And that's how we're doing it. <laughs> well, thank you for uh, taking a little time out from your hot yoga and your your detoxing from the the corporate uh, media uh, and the mess that's on Twitter to to spend some time with us. And you know you have an open seat here, and I want y'all to follow him at Xavier Pope, E X A V I E R Pope, and listen and watch him on Suit Up News and on ESPN Las Vegas. Thank you for joining us today. I appreciate you, brother. 